beginning with Dom Trooper's abilities. Dom Trooper's primary fire weapon is Giga Launcher DR1 Multiplex Projectile. Fire a projectile that explodes on impact, damaging units in a small area. It deals up to 250 damage for an explosion, with an additional 100 for a direct hit. Dom Trooper's secondary fire is Giga Launcher DR1 Multiplex Beam. Fire a continuous beam for a short time, damaging enemies at any range. This 8 second cooldown deals up to 500 damage and limits projectile shots during use. Dom Trooper's F ability is Adhesive Sensor Mine. Place up to 3 motion detecting proximity mines that explode when an enemy approaches, dealing up to 150 damage to all enemy units in a small area. Dom Trooper's C ability is Armor Gun. Grant 500 temporary bonus HP to a teammate. This 10 second cooldown decays at a rate of 50 HP per second. Dom Trooper's G maneuver is Screaming Nimbus. Charge forward for a short time, deflecting attacks from the front for the 10 second duration, dealing 300 damage, knockback and shield guard break to enemies it contacts. This G maneuver grants 300 decaying temporary HP, in addition to extra movement speed to allies. Let's move on to the strengths and weaknesses. Dom Trooper's biggest and most defining trait is its armor gun, and a massive percentage of its value comes from it. It allows it to overheal a single target by a flat 500 HP. While this is good for supporting frontline tanks like Sazabi, it is amazing on a unit like Barbatos, as it can give it or any other flanker the health pool of a tank temporarily. Flankers in particular gain proportionally higher advantage from the 500 HP than a Sazabi does for example. For Barbatos, this extra HP added to its small hitbox and powerful one-shot combos make it borderline game-breaking on a unit that can attack extremely aggressively and quickly before it decays. Not enough can be said about how powerful this ability really is, as it truly can sway whole teamfights and carry games. Similarly powerful, it has a strong ultimate that not only allows for aggressive team pushes as it gives 300 overheal shields to its team and a movement speed boost, but it can also target down solo enemies, or punch through a Sazabi's shield, forcing it to drop it and become vulnerable. For other abilities, Dom Trooper also has a good capability to finish off low HP targets as they attempt to flee. Its laser deals up to 500 damage and has no range limitation, making it a great option. It also has above average hit points with 1200 that give it a bit of tankiness. Dom Trooper's biggest weakness though is its low and inconsistent damage. While it is not terrible and can still kill enemies, it deals in unreliable projectiles that require 2 direct hits and most of a laser against a 1000 HP mobile suit to kill it. This is just not impressive in a high damage fast paced game. Additionally, it has a large hitbox that leads to it losing a lot of 1v1s. Moving on to when to play Dom Trooper. Dom Trooper is entirely oriented around its armor gun, so if you don't have a good target for it, then you shouldn't even be using it. Dom Trooper should be exclusively played to pocket a teammate, particularly a powerful flanker like Barbatos that benefits amazingly from the overheal as it plays in melee range. Sazabi is a great option too, and you can justify using Dom Trooper with Zaku 2 or Exia if the player is good enough. Map type isn't the most important consideration for Dom Trooper, but its best maps are mid-range maps. Too far range and it will have inconsistent damage, and the units it wants to pocket won't be able to get good value. Too close range, and it is likely to be dove itself. Dom Trooper also has no high ground access abilities, so play on defense when you can stand on a high ground, or in maps without a lot of high grounds. Now to cover how to play Dom Trooper. Dom Trooper plays slightly different on attack and defense. On offense, you should begin fights by poking your enemy down from range with rockets and laser. Then when your teammates who are planning to armor pack engages, you armor pack them. As your pack Barbatos, Sazabi, or other flanker pushes aggressively, you are no longer the enemy's target, so push with them into the safe space they are making and deal damage. Keep pushing if your team is getting enough value as you could often secure a win from the extra pressure, but if not then back up and play slowly. Poke at the enemy and wait for your armor pack teammate to be able to re-engage with the armor pack again. Repeat this until the enemy is vulnerable enough to hard push and finish. For defense, make sure to set up mines in your chokes or where flankers are likely to go before the fight starts. These will provide extra damage during the fight and can help mark against flankers. From there, poke the enemy from range with laser and rockets, and then armor pack your aggressive teammate when the enemy engages so that they can compete with the enemy team. Another option is to use the armor pack to save a target that is consistently getting dove on by enemies, but you usually will get more value out of armor packing your aggressive teammate instead. From here, the defense is played the same as the offensive version. Based on how healthy the enemy team is after you use your armor pack, you can then push harder if you can kill them all, or if you can't, then you play slow and wait for armor pack to be available again. Repeat the process until you get a big enough advantage off the armor pack, so you can push the enemy and kill them all. However, when you have your G maneuver available, you gain an additional set of options. Using your G maneuver gives all your teammates 300 overhealth and speeds them up, allowing you to push hyper aggressively. Alternatively, it can also be used defensively. When your team is getting pushed back and looking very vulnerable, you can use this ultimate to tank a lot of damage and take a lot of aggression at the front. The extra health you're giving to your teammates can also look to save them, and the movement speed will allow them to reposition or get to safer locations. Moving on to how to use the ability specifically. 
Dome Trooper's laser is best used to finish off targets, so it should primarily be safe for this. It does have infinite range, so it can be used early in the fight to poke the enemy before the fight begins, but just make sure to have it available when the enemy engages, or you will frequently lose kills you could have gotten with it. As Armor Pack is your most important ability, make sure to save this for the unit that specifically needs it. It should almost always be used on your most aggressive unit, Barbatos first if you have one, and then Sazabi if there isn't a Barbatos. As mentioned before, Zaku 2 and then Xe are your next best options. Saving it to pocket a teammate that is being hunted and dove by the enemy is a rare use, but still an extra alternative. Regardless of whatever you choose, you cannot waste it or you might as well not even be on Dom Trooper in the first place. Mines should be placed before fights and defense to maximize your total damage. The cooldown for the mines begins when you use them, so you can have the maximum 3 placed already, and then the 3 ready to be used right after they explode. Just avoid using them in the middle of fights. You typically will just trade time you could have been using regular forms of damage. In regards to the G maneuver, Screaming Nimbus forces shield units to drop their shields when it hits them, so make sure to hunt down a shield unit like Sazabi and hit them at least once during your ultimate. Additionally, Dom Trooper cannot take damage from the front during this, but it does not mean it's unkillable, so be careful of going too deep and being focused and killed. While Dom Trooper's G maneuver is a powerful tool for securing kills, it is best used as mentioned before, to create a team push, or to counter an enemy advantage, so make sure to think first of using it like this. Looking to become an even better Dom Trooper player? Then check out these guides for its main armor targets. Barbatos right here, Sazabi, and many more guides in the playlist above.